child rape by police is a deeply disturbing and heinous crime that not only violates the victim, but also breaches the trust placed in law enforcement authorities. Cases involving such crimes can have profound and long-lasting impacts on victims, their families, and communities. These incidents often lead to calls for stringent accountability, reform in police practices, and enhanced measures to protect vulnerable individuals. This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Lois Howard was arrested by Canton Police in Cherokee County, Georgia, at 1 a.m. sitting on a bench in a public shopping center in front of a Hallmark store. Howard was arrested on a criminal trespass from the Publix, even though she was not on Publix property. It was stated by Officer Leonard that it was believed she was stealing, while the stores were closed at 1 a.m. Friday night. Howard is an elderly female. She stated to EMS she was shoved into the back of the police car and suffered several broken ribs. The, those two individuals were at Hallmark, not at Publix, but they were at the Hallmark sitting on a bench. And I believe the Hallmark um, person that was working there called it in saying that they had stolen things from the area before and they were sitting on the bench outside and they just didn't want them around. They were not CT from Hallmark, but they were CT from Publix. I hope I didn't break her ribs. I, I was very careful with her. So we got sent to the Publix for Jerry and Lois. I guess Publix employees were concerned that they shoplift, so okay. they called us out there for them. They were both gonna get citations for the city ordinance of loitering, because now they're raising suspicion that the store's property is gonna get stolen. Howard was then taken to the Cherokee County Detention Center and dropped off in the parking lot of the jail. The jail staff refused to accept her due to her injuries, and there was a lot of chaos and lies past that point. Join me as we gone down this long, winding, and twisting road to discover the truth about what happened to Lois Howard and the officers involved. Today's date is September 29th, 2021. This is Monica Franklin, an investigator with Post. I'm returning a phone call to Gregory Ayers. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach um, Officer Ayers, please. This is he. Hey, sir, this is Monica Franklin, and I'm. you left me a message earlier today. I apologize for calling so late, but we were in a Zoom conference this afternoon. No, ma'am, you're not bothering me. <laughs> so, I, I... Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I've, I've got your file up. I haven't gotten any paperwork from the Canton Police Department yet. So, all I have right now is a blurb of what they told me happened. And that you had... And let me see. It shows that you... Um, did you resign while under investigation? Yes, ma'am. I, re I resigned. I'll, I mean, it, neither one of them sound good. Uh, I was under an internal investigation. It was after I met with Chief Merrifield... At the very end of my the investigation, and I went in, I met with him one afternoon. I went in the next morning and I asked him uh, because I felt in my heart that I was, he was going to go with the deputy chief's recommendation for termination. Uh, I did not lie. That's what the whole thing was about. It, it says in the 45 page memorandum that the deputy chief felt they didn't know for sure because I didn't lie. I've been in law enforcement. If you've got any of my thing, I've done law enforcement for 25 years. Uh, I gave Bartow County 20 years of my life. I gave Canton five years of my life. Uh, I wasn't brought up to tell a lie. Uh, so that's the gist of what happened. Uh, I did not want me having it on my file that I resigned in lieu of termination. So I went in the next morning. I talked to the chief, and I asked him if he would accept my resignation. Before. Uh, so it was at the very end of uh, the investigation. It wasn't. Right at the beginning, it wasn't in the middle. Uh, it was me standing up for me not lying. So that's 
that's the gist. Uh, what were what were the allegations, or what were the um, specifics of what you lied about? Okay, uh, like I said, I've done this. I've been in law enforcement twenty five years. It started out as an internal investigation on an officer that was under me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. She took an elderly female to the Cherokee County Jail for. I believe it was criminal trespass. The jail did not accept her. So this young female officer took it upon herself to, she took it upon herself to make remarks back to a sergeant in the jail, and she dropped this elderly female off at the front of Cherokee County Jail. Now, with all that, my house, my my dining room, uh-huh. my kitchen, my hallway going back to the bedrooms, and the bathroom of my house was flooded. This was on a Thursday night. I remember that because I've got teenage kids who I were who I was picking up Friday. I don't know if you've ever smelled what wet floor smells like, but it's nasty. I I don't. I'm sorry. I said I I probably agree with that. So I took and I had already bought bleach, one of those pump sprayers, fans, everything. My mind that Thursday at work was a dead set on getting off at six AM, coming home, spraying that bleach on my floor, putting those fans up and trying to get my house as in as nice of order as I could get. So, therefore, my mind, thinking back on it now, which, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, I shouldn't even have worked because my mind was totally on getting through that shift, getting home, and not even going to bed, which I normally don't do anyways on my last day that I work, uh, and getting my house in as good a shape as I could. Well, whenever that happened, it happened, I think, starting at like maybe one something in the morning. Uh, I was told, and once I read the 45-page memorandum that's got bits and pieces of the four interviews that I was a part of. Yes, sir. And like I said, it, it started out on the officer that worked with me and for me. Uh, so were you, her direct, turned, you were her direct supervisor? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so... It's two things, two policy violations, failure to act as a supervisor, which I take totally the blame for. Uh, and one, they asked me on several, on all four interviews about what interaction me and the officer had. And there's a 13 minute conversation. I, t- I told them over and over and over. I don't remember. If she says that we had a conversation and this is what it's about then that's probably correct. Do I remember it? No, I don't. And I told them that countless times. And she would, the internal investigation, the sergeant over I would ask me about this conversation, about that conversation. And I told them, and it wasn't until the deputy chief asked me to read that 45-page memorandum that he typed up. And that brought to light and whenever I had a meeting with him I told him I did what you asked I read that and it did shed light on some of the events that happened that night between me and the officer I was trying to tell you before that I don't remember I remember seeing her outside in the parking lot I don't remember talking to her while she was in the jail now, I did act after the sergeant in the jail called me and said, hey, this is what happened. This is what the gist of what the officer made a remark back to me. And I just wanted to let you know, because I've got to send an email up to my chain of command. After I got off the phone with him, and my, I made notes of the, the gist of mine and his conversation. After that, I called my lieutenant at like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I said, hey, this is what's transpired. 
I just wanted to give you a heads up about it. And he said that I, his recommendation was that I email my captain. I asked him, I said, is it okay if I talk to him on the phone so I can make sure that, you know, I let him know everything. And he said, yes, that'll be fine. It's 7 a.m. that morning. I'm at home. I call my captain and I let him know what happened. Neither one of them felt like it was that big of a deal. I don't know what transpired between the sheriff's office and my supervisors after that. But like I said, shortly after that, I was called in because they had started an internal investigation on her. Okay. Which I was brought in because I was her supervisor. What was was her name? Officer Leonard. Leonard, okay. Has she been there long? Uh, she had been there, I think, two years, okay. maybe. So she knew what two, the one or three. So she knew what the protocol and policies were regarding. Yes, that. ma'am. Okay. It was one of them where she's she's got the ability and the knowledge to be a top notch officer. Uh, she's well educated, and you know they were like, "Well, you you approved her report." And like I told them, that's on me. But I've, between her and a couple of other officers, and I've got friends that's, that's their, their supervisors at the sheriff's office, and they've even said, you know what, I've got officers the same way. I don't read their reports word for word because they always do a good job. Now, again, is that fall back on me? Yes, ma'am, it does. Okay, so uh, that falls back on me. I admit it to that. Yes, sir. Uh, but their thing is, is that they feel I was put on admin. I was called in on the, right towards the beginning of my shift, I think on a Friday, and I was told that I was, they, had, they were starting an internal investigation on me. And it says in my, uh, on my admin leave memo that they feel like I, I was being, I was untruthful during my interview. Uh, and so I was on admin leave for weeks, uh, because they feel that I was being untruthful. And then they, of course, on the 45 page memorandum, it says that, they found discrepancies or untruthfulness during my four interviews with the, the sergeant over internal affairs. Okay. Uh, and like I said, I, I don't lie. I'm out, I, you know, I told them and I was as truthful as I knew to be. And for that, and I even told the chief the day before, uh, Whenever I talked to him, I told him, and I told the, my captain and deputy chief, I know after doing this for so long, you can't you can't do that work, this kind of work, without your integrity. So 25 years, you can check my personnel file. The 20 years at the sheriff's office, I was told, and I, by no means am I trying to boost anything about myself because okay. everything that you need to know is in personnel files at the sheriff's office and the police department i've got a letter of accommodations i've got a lifesaver award 20 years at the sheriff's office there's nothing in my file okay especially nothing that is going to lead anybody to believe that i've told a lie about anything so let me ask you what did they tell you specifically what they thought you were untruthful about? The questions about the conversation with the phone calls between myself and Officer Lentz. They're saying that I wasn't coming forth with information. I wasn't answering truthfully to their questions because they find it hard to believe that I can't remember a 13-minute conversation that I had with Officer Leonard or a face-to-face conversation that I had with Officer Leonard at the police department. 
she had a training officer that said that we had a conversation at the police department. They had, there was a training officer with her. The same training officer said that she had it on speaker whenever me and her had that conversation, when we had a 13-minute conversation. And I told them, and I was as truthful with them as I possibly could be, and I kept telling them, I don't remember the con- a conversation. Of course, it's on my work phone. Well, sir, let me ask, was she trying, I know because you said you read the report, you did not read the report before you signed off on it, was she trying to sugarcoat what she had done at the jail in her report? Ma'am, I I didn't read her. You didn't read her, so you, so. And like I said, that's totally on me. I didn't read her report because, like I said, she's well educated and she's got, the ability to be a top notch. Were they thinking you were trying to cover for her? I, I don't know. I just know that they they were saying that I was untruthful. Uh, uh, they said that they found that I was being untruthful during questions that I was asked during during my four interviews which first started with Officer Leonard and then turned around and went to, it turned around and they started one on me because of me being untruthful. It says that what I violated was both of them were uh, policies on maybe the professionalism part of our, of the Kent Police Department's policy. One, was failure to act as a supervisor and one for being untruthful. Hold on, I'll, I've got the I've got the forty five page memo. Okay. And and like I said, if it'll expedite, the uh, because I went and talked to my old sheriff at Barco County, and he's like, let me know whenever it all gets said and done, and you know we'll go from there. Uh. That one. A request for an internal investigation on me. Uh, the date of the memorandum was July 19th. August 11th is the disciplinary recommendation that I got from the deputy chief. The, let's see. It started on May 21st. Uh, July 19th is, I think, whenever... It says that the that internal affairs investigation was opening, was being opened on me. Stems from previous uh, previous investigation involving the unbecoming conduct and unsatisfactory performance of Officer Aaron Leonard on May 21st. After medical personnel within the jail refused to admit us to an arrestee, the Officer Leonard transported to the jail. Sergeant Ayers was interviewed several times to provide further information. During Sergeant Ayers' interviews, it was determined that Sergeant Ayers may have been untruthful regarding the communications he had with Officer Leonard and Officer Ogilvy the night of the incident and the level of his knowledge about the incident. Furthermore, he may have, he may have failed to act and perform his responsibilities as a supervisor upon learning of the incident along with Officer Leonard's actions. And then that's just a part of the front page. And I'm trying to find it's got a, it's got a summary of I guess where he listened to the recording, and then at the end, I mean the first paragraph of course it says this memorandum is advised you. I'm making a disciplinary recommendation to the chief Stephen Merrifield that your employment with the city of can police department be terminated for the reasons discussed here again? And I'm trying to, oh, here it is. Code of Conduct, General Order 2.01, Responsibility of a Supervisor, 2.01.38, and Code of Conduct, General Order 2.01, Employees to be Truthful, and that's 2.01.30. Okay. 
I mean, I've got the 45-page memo, and I've got the memorandum. I think this is where I was put on admin leave with pay. Yes, ma'am, I've got a notice. I guess my, notice. My, my thing is, there. what would there be to lie about? Because this the initial investigation only involved the lack of supervision, which, I mean, that ha I mean... All right, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, everybody that I've talked to, my best friend, uh, I've explained this, like I said, after it was all over with, to the sheriff here, uh -huh. who I uh, worked under for 16 out of my 20 years, uh, he told, I told him what had happened, uh, and he's like, uh, he seems like somebody's got a case of this. You know what? For you, he said that's that's ridiculous. He said he told me that he would probably write up his deputy, and he would have a meeting with the supervisor, and he tell the super, he would tell his, super, his sergeant or lieutenant that if they can't do a better job than that, he'll find somebody else that can. He said, and that would have been it. Uh, and that was the and I, that was the deputy chief that said that, correct? Is that? No, that's the sheriff. Sheriff. Okay. Sheriff, so he was referring to sheriff, the deputy chief. Deputy chief. It was his forty-five page memorandum, and okay. he recommended that um, for that I be terminated okay, because of the two code of conduct policy violations. Okay. But like I said, uh, you know, I. I've talked to several supervisors and stuff, uh, and ma'am, I, I don't know. Well, let me. I mean, the, the, I don't know exactly why. Uh, I wish, I wish I did, uh, because everybody that I've talked to had a hard time uh, trying to figure out why. This, unless part of my Part of my thing was was Sheriff Reynolds, who is the sheriff of Cherokee County, called the chief, my chief. Yes, sir. And talked down to him, and that caused enough uproar to make an example out of me of how things would be, how things were handled. Okay. Because, uh, like I said, I, you know, for something like this or I don't care how serious or how light it is I'm not going to lie about anything because I haven't lied in 25 years and I'm sure enough not going to start over an officer dropping a lady off at the sheriff's office and anything like that yes sir it's like I said I'm not lying about anything okay. anyway well I, I see that you've never had a post investigation so do you actually know what it entails what do you mean do you know the process of what we're I'm I'm gonna have to collect all the information from your agency and put together a case file and this case file will go before a probable cause committee that makes a recommendation on your certification Okay. So you are afforded an opportunity, which I can't make you do, to write a written response to the investigation. And I actually, I try to, to have my people write one because I've heard the probable cause committee actually say that if the officer doesn't care enough to write a written response, then it doesn't, they, they're, they're not really worried about the invest, they don't care about the investigation. So, so what I would. What you're saying is, is I need to type up a response to your letter. Uh, no, 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 basically what the written response is, it, and because all the, they're, they're going to see my summary, but if you send me a written response that's signed and notarized, I add that as an attachment, and then they can read in your words what happened. That gives you an opportunity to explain what happened, just like you did to me. Okay. And I would, I mean, I would certainly encourage you to do that, but like I said, I can't, yes, make, I can't make you do that. No, ma'am, I, I, I totally understand. But like I said, the reason the reason I went in the next morning is I had a gut feeling that the chief, which, I mean, I and like I said, I've been around long enough doing this to know that I didn't, there was, 
I felt that there was no way that a chief would go against his deputy chief's recommendation. So after I got back home from meeting with the chief, uh, and it really started to sink in, uh, that's what I felt in my gut and my heart that I needed to do. Okay. Because I wasn't, I did not want to go down and be, and have it in my record that I resigned in lieu of termination. Yes, sir. Like I said, neither one of them, neither one of them sound good. Uh, but I felt like resigning while under investigation. And the chief even told me that morning that, you know, it was, you know, I was, I was doing this at the very end of the investigation. Okay. I mean, he did. He did give me so, I mean, that much of I mean, a positive remark or Because some people, I mean, when, when, I mean, so yeah, make sure you document that because a lot of times when it says re resigned while under investigation, a lot of times they don't even get to conduct the investigation because the officer's already resigned before it started. No, so, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like I said, I pushed this, I pushed this all the way to the end to, to the point where I wasn't going to have any wording of a termination in my file because I, I went to work every day and I did the best that I possibly could. I did everything that I knew that I had to do to try to keep from making a mark, a bad mark on myself or the department or the sheriff. So I, I live by that every day. And as a supervisor, I instilled that into everybody that I come in contact or worked under me. I didn't, you know, I, I don't. Uh, did you, so I, did you discipline this officer Leonard for what she did at the jail? No, ma'am. Cause like I said, when it started, I didn't, I told them they never said anything. My Lieutenant or my captain never said, but I take it back. This was on a Friday. This was, on, this was on Friday morning. Whenever this happened, I was off the weekend. My Lieutenant. Now I can't, remember what he said word for word that he told me to let my let my captain know and that me and him would start working on what needed to happen monday whenever we come back because we worked monday and tuesday i was off wednesday and third i was no i was off monday and tuesday we worked that was our short week so i only worked we worked wednesday night and thursday night so i was off that weekend so to the bit i mean i'm not i can't quote because it's been that long but not word for word, my lieutenant said, well, we'll just take care of it and do whatever they, you know, what they want us to do. Speaking of the captain on up, so you, so, okay. so, you, so you understood that they were going to bypass you and they were going to handle the situation with Officer Leonard? Or whenever I returned back to work Monday, me and the lieutenant would sit down and, you know, do it all. Okay. And start start the discipline process, or or check it, look into it further, and then go from there. But that never happened. Okay. This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. exclusive. So I exclusive. I never was, like I said, it it was the two policy violations: failure to act as a supervisor, and then the uh, to be truthful. Officer to be truthful. Okay. Well, so it was both code of conduct on those two things. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll I'll call up there tomorrow, get all the paperwork together, and start my end of it. But if you can get that letter together, that would be great. Um, and then I will add that to the case file. Do you think a couple of weeks would be enough time for you to do that? A couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll 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 start working on it. Okay, perfect. And it has to be uh, signed and notarized. Yes, ma'am. I've, I've, I've seen that part. I was just wanting to be able to talk to, get a chance to talk to you. To oh, I, I, I call all my officers. Right, exactly. I, I, because exactly I, what had happened. And I was told, because I called probably maybe a week I, afterwards, and I talked to a gentleman at your office, and he, he gave me a little bit of the information about the steps. But he said, uh, 
he had said the same thing. I think he had it in the notes that he had talked to Sergeant Cromer, and she said the two the file was too big to send all at one time, which I don't totally understand that either, uh, because this is my livelihood. So, and I know she's I know she's smart, and she knows how to do stuff because she was we were officers together. She trained me when she got promoted to sergeant in the on patrol. She, I got promoted as a corporal, and she trained me to be a corporal. And then I took her sergeant spot when she got promoted to internal investigation. Okay. So I don't exactly buy. <laughs> it's not a big deal because I'll just tell her to put it all on a disc or a thumb drive, and I'll come pick it up. So I'll, it's, I'll go. Just I, I appreciate anything, and like I Let's... said, uh, I'll. I'll start working on that, and, and I'll try to get that the, to you. Do you have the address to mail it to? Right, and then they'll put an address. Oh. That's on. I know. Well, I thank you so much, and I apologize for not getting back with you earlier. And no, ma'am, Miss Franklin. Here. Like I said, I I was just trying to I was trying my best to be patient uh, as I could uh, because uh, I figured y'all were probably swamped. Well, with all this mess going on. Well, and I've, uh, I, I actually, I just, I've been out of town for 10 days, so I just got back yesterday. So I'm playing catch up on a lot of stuff. But if you have any questions well. at all, just give me a call back, and this is my work number. And like I said, if you leave me a message, if I don't answer, I will return the call. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Okay. And you have a good night, sir. You too. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Today I'm diving into a deeply troubling and important topic. The 2024 scandal involving police officers caught in a child pornography ring. So how did we get here? It all started with an extensive investigation by federal authorities. Over the past year, they uncovered a network operating across multiple states involving not just civilians but also individuals sworn to uphold the law. Now when we think of police officers, we think of protectors. People who put their lives on the line to keep us safe. But in this dark twist, some officers wound on the other side of the line. The investigation revealed that these officers used their positions of power to hide their heinous activities, exploiting the trust placed in them by the community. Why did these officers do it? Well, that's a complex question. Some were driven by personal demons, others by a deep-seated sense of invulnerability, thinking their badges shielded them from justice. This scandal has shaken public confidence and raised serious questions about oversight and accountability within police forces. Authorities have already arrested several officers and more arrests are expected as the investigation continues. The public outcry has been massive, with many demanding thorough reform and stricter screening processes for law enforcement personnel. This is just about punishing the guilty. It's about understanding how such a breach of trust could happen and ensuring it never happens again. It's about protecting the most vulnerable among us and holding accountable those who exploit their power for nefarious purposes. In the wake of this scandal, communities are coming together to demand transparency and justice. It's a painful reminder that vigilance is necessary, even when it comes to those who are supposed to be our protectors. So what can we do? Stay informed, stay involved, and keep pushing for the changes that ensure our police forces are trustworthy and accountable. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, please like and share. And remember, awareness is the first step towards change. Stay safe and stay vigilant.